This section is on aircraft maintenance records. Um, it's a little bit boring, so stand by, but it's not boring to the FAA because if this isn't okay, your flight isn't okay. Um, these are the maintenance records from one of the Cessna 172s. Uh, typically, you won't look at these until almost to your check ride time. Uh, we keep these in a safe area where the mechanic has access to update them. But we do have a sheet that we're going to go over that um, you will know as a pilot if the maintenance is up to date or not. Um, you'll notice that we have an aircraft logbook that covers the um, airframe of the, the airplane. And then we have the engine log, so anything to do with the engine would be documented in here. And then there's also a propeller log. Um, when, when the time comes, your instructor will go through these books with you before your check ride so you can show the examiner how you know this aircraft is airworthy according to the maintenance records. So what you'll end up doing is uh, going to the last thing that was documented in here and then working your way forward to see what the current maintenance was uh, covered under. So the mechanic will write specifically what they have done, which inspections, and anything they've changed or updated or anything like that. Okay, so I'm setting these aside. There's also um, a booklet that has ADs in it. ADs are Airworthiness Directives. It is like a recall item for your car. It's where the manufacturer and the FAA have made an agreement that there's something that needs to be tended to to this airplane that could be a potential accident uh, waiting to happen. So for example, there could be an airworthiness directive uh, having the mechanic check the seat rails, the seat tracks, um, every 50 or 100 hours. There could be an AD that says you need to change the starter because those um, are not working properly, that particular make and model. Um, so the ADs could come in one of two types. It could either be a reoccurring AD that falls on a different time interval. It could have to do with every 100 hours it needs to be done, or every year it needs to be done, every 500 hours it needs to be done. So that will be a, a reoccurring AD. And then finally there's the um, one-time AD where something either needed to be checked or changed, and once it was, you don't have to worry about it again. The mechanics research this information and um, they keep it in with the maintenance logs to make sure that they're tending to the proper airworthiness directives. There's also another thing called a service bulletin. The service bulletins aren't quite as important. They come just from the manufacturer and it's merely a recommendation. You may or may not have to uh, tend to a service bulletin, but the airworthiness directives you absolutely have to comply with. When it comes to trying to memorize the items that are required for the maintenance, the easiest way to do it is just to remember Aviators 50. And what this stands for is your annual inspection. An annual inspection is required by all aircraft owners unless the aircraft is under an FAA approved progressive inspection. So approved progressive inspection, they typically use those for large aircraft like airliners, is if they had to ground the aircraft while they do a complete inspection on it, the airplane would be down for maybe four months at a time. So what they'll do is they'll do maybe a tail section uh, one month and then the engines another month and, and so on. They'll keep dividing the, dividing the airplane up into different segments until they you know, covered the whole entire airplane. Um, but other than that, all, all airplanes are required to have an annual inspection. Even if the airplane did not fly for a whole year, it still is required to have an annual inspection. I'm going to skip the V for a moment and go to the 1, which was illustrated as I in our memory aid. The one stands for a 100-hour inspection. This maintenance inspection is only required if the aircraft is for hire, if the aircraft makes money. So any type of commercial airplane or airplane used for uh, flight instruction or banner towing or skydiving, anything like that, the airplane would have to have a 100-hour inspection. Now the difference between these two inspections is only who signs it off. The actual maintenance performed is identical. They're both extremely thorough uh, inspections from uh, checking all the pulleys and cables, uh, removing the seats and um, inspecting the floor, uh, compression checking the engine, very very thorough inspections. But one thing that is different, is different between the two is who gets to sign them off. There's an, an AMP and that stands for an airframe and power plant mechanic. An airframe mechanic is one that is qualified to work on the airframe, such as the seat, seat tracks, pulleys, cables, the skin of the wings, anything like that. The power plant has to do with the engine. So most mechanics would have both their A and their P, so we call them A and P mechanics. 
Once a person has been an AMP mechanic for at least two years, they're allowed to test up to the higher level. The higher level authorizes them to be an IA, which stands for Inspector Authorized. So back to who gets to sign off which one of these. The 100 hour may be performed and signed off by an AMP, but the annual inspection has to be signed off by an IA. The AMP may have performed the work, but it had to have occurred under an IA's authority, or the IA themselves may have, been able, or may have performed the work. So the only difference between the two inspections would be uh, who actually performed the work. Now there is one other type of person that works on our airplanes, and that's called an avionics tech. The avionics technician is the person that would um, check our transponder, our pedostatic and altimeter, um, change, uh, put a different radio system in there for us, anything to do with the avionics, a separate person does that type of work. Now moving on, the A stands for ADs. And AD stands for Airworthiness Directive. It's when the FAA has become involved with some kind of chronic problem with the airplane. So for example, the starter kept messing up or um, the seat tracks kept uh, hollowing out and the seat, tra the seat slid backwards on takeoff a few times or something like that, where the FAA has said, okay, you have to keep checking this on a regular interval or it could be just where you replace it one time. So an AD could be a one-timer or a reoccurring. The reoccurring ones may fall on different intervals. It could be every 50 hours something needs to be inspected or changed. It could be every 100 hours. It could be when the engine overhaul is due. But it, would, it could even be associated with an annual inspection. But an airworthiness directive, you may not fly if that is not complied with. So they are required. There's another thing called a service bulletin that the um, manufacturer puts out or issues. Um, you don't necessarily, there's certain circumstances you have to comply with those, but it's usually just a recommendation, not, not necessarily something that you must comply with. But the ADs you do. The T stands for transponder. The transponder is a piece of equipment in your airplane. It's a little small box on your radio stack and it has a little selector knob and then there's uh, four frequencies that we can put in there. And this box allows the controllers to see us um, by the radar. It'll show them how high we are in our position. So the transponder um, has to be inspected every 24 calendar months. Now why I didn't say just two years is because the 24 calendar months gives you to the end of the month to have it complied with after the 24 month period. Um, the transponder, since it is part of our radio stack, would have to be inspected by an avionics tech. Also, the S, our little memory aid for the S is your static source and your um, altimeter. Okay, the static and altimeter also have to be inspected by that avionics technician. There's not a lot of them around, so good thing you only have to go find them every two years or 24 calendar months. So the avionics um, inspector, or the avionics technician will inspect our transponder and our uh, pedostatic and altimeter every 24 calendar months. The E stands for ELT. The ELT is your emergency locator transmitter. If you impact the ground, with a lot of G-forces, the ELT will go off and it transmits a signal on the Mayday frequency 121.5, but it must be inspected by the mechanic every 12 calendar months. So typically they will inspect the ELT right along with your annual inspection. Now the batteries inside the ELT have to be replaced half their life or one hour cumulative use. So what that means is if the battery produced was good for eight years, after four years it must be exchanged out. Um, or one hour cumulative use. Cumulative means it, um, the, maybe the mechanic tested it for five minutes one year and then five minutes another year and then somebody landed really hard and the ELT went off for 50 minutes um, before somebody noticed it and turned it off. So that would be a cumulative one hour. The batteries would have to be changed out. The R stands for registration. The registration is due every three years. Um, 
And this is kind of a new rule that has uh, just come up. It used to be once you registered your airplane, you didn't have to worry about it again until you sold it or it was destroyed or something for some reason. But now it's due every three years. The 50 stands for 50 hour. The 50 hour is um, typically used, uh, sometimes it can be volunteer uh, if no AD is associated with it. It's um, a preventive maintenance. So, for example, uh, servicing the tires or changing your oil or changing spark plugs or something kind of minor. You might even do similar to your car. Um, the 50 hour is a preventive maintenance and you could find what items may be performed as preventive maintenance in the far aim under part 43. Um, but also with the preventive maintenance, even a private pilot could do their own preventive maintenance if they wanted to, but you must hold at least a private pilot certificate or higher in order to do your own um, preventive maintenance. All right, so the only one I missed right now was the V, and that stands for VOR checks. A VOR check is done only if you intend to fly the airplane under IFR conditions or on an IFR flight plan which means instrument flight rule, and it's done every 30 days by the pilot. Okay, and it's documented and we keep that information in the airplane. So your memory aid for the, the um, requirements for your maintenance for the aircraft is Aviators 50. Annual, the signed off by an IA, the VOR, the pilot does every 30 days if you intend to fly it in the clouds. The one is for the 100 hour inspection, that's only if the aircraft is for hire. AD, or A stands for the ADs, that's Airworthiness Directives. They are, uh, they must be complied with. The transponder is every 24 calendar months by avionics guy. The E is the ELT, Emergency Locator Transmitter. The batteries themselves must, oh, I'm sorry, the ELT is every 12 calendar months. And the batteries have to be changed half-life or one hour cumulative use. The R is registration and it's every three years. The static source and altimeter have to be inspected 24 calendar months. And finally, the 50 hour um, may be optional and it has to do with preventive maintenance.